It's not landed in the mass market yet, but we here at T3 have had a play with Google Glass and the good news is that, well, it's good. We only had to play with it for a couple of hours, but in that short time, you can see its uses and the tech behind it is fascinating. So let's start with the way it looks and the basic ways you're going to be using it. Now some people are saying you will look like an idiot in it, but I didn't find it that bad. I usually wear glasses so I'm used to having something on your face. If you're not, then you might get a while getting used to it. You'll have to do a few adjustments when you first put them on. So you have to move the screen to get used to it and also move the frame so it fits your face, but you're pretty much ready to go from the off. Okay, glass, take a picture. On the flexible body, there's a trackpad on the right hand arm that you can scroll through menus and control glass if you don't fancy using voice control. It's simple to use and we had a few wrong turns but we found ourselves using more and more of a touchpad, especially in noisy locations instead of using voice. Now, what can you do with glass? All you need to remember is the command OK glass and then what you would like it to do. So as you can imagine, taking a picture, recording a video is simple, but Google search is where you'll have the most fun and we found glass most useful. OK glass, Google, do I need an umbrella tomorrow? No, rain is not expected tomorrow in London. The forecast is 31 degrees and partly cloudy. So instead of displaying URLs and search results, Glass will dictate or show you the answer. So if you ask a direct question, it'll give you a direct answer. So we asked it, what does the moon look like? And it gave us images of the moon. It's a much more intelligent way of browsing and you can also do things like Google Translate ask it how to say something and also do conversion and maths. How do I say good morning in Italian? Buongiorno. How do you say goodbye in Japanese? Sayonara. What is 450 divided by 4? is 112.5. Now for the most part using voice search was pretty painless. It got confused with similar letters like P's and T's and B's. And as long as you saw it clearly, it gave us the results we needed. Okay, glass. Google T3. I've completely confused it. Teeth! Onto maps, and again, we only had a couple of hours to play with glass, but we were impressed. The results you get is based on the direction you're facing, so if you move from left to right, the map will move accordingly. And it's pretty swift to find in local restaurants and points of interest. Good news for us here over the UK, because you usually have to wait a little bit longer for location-based information. Okay, glass, get directions to nearest sushi restaurant. Yeah, you, me, sushi, that's right. And that, if I walk this way, it changes. <laughs> awesome. Glass's core functions such as direction, speech recognition and camera work extremely well. We were crippled by the small selection of apps and we didn't actually get to play any. But by the time it comes out on sale in 2014, they'll almost certainly be changed. Once the full consumer version is out, along with a broader range of apps, we'll take another look and reassess the product. But for now, it's safe to say that Google Glass is a unique and potentially great product at a very early stage of development. So we're told the US should expect a consumer product by the end of 2013 and the UK at the beginning of 2014. For the latest on Glass and Google, keep a look at T3.com. OK, Glass. Google. Pictures of Ryan Gosling. Yeah. I'll just have that constantly on. No one will know what I'm like. <laughs> just constant pictures of Ryan Gosling. 